Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Houston Kilby YouTube channel. Let's get to it. Oh yeah guys, check it out. It's about two something in the morning right now, but we got them both sitting in there and they're both looking pretty good. Bam. Them beasts in the back of there. I'm liking it. Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Last week you guys seen uh, us widen the wheel wells there on the GTO. Uh, this week we're going to put some wheel tubs in it, so let's get started. Here we go. Uh, first off, what you want to do is you want to figure out what size wheel tub that you're going to need for your tire size. So what I went with, I've got a 33 inch tall tire and at my ride height I'm going to be at, we decide a 40 inch wide diameter wheel tub is going to be the best for us and uh, what you want to kind of go by is you kind of want a, a four inch minimum possibly three and a half inch in that area right in there on uh, tire clearance between the tire and the wheel tub uh, four inches is awesome three and a half is really pushing it that's just what we've kind of learned um, I know there's several ways of doing that and several different ideas and thoughts on how that kind of works there, but that's just kind of what we do. But uh, we want the maximum amount of clearance as possible because you've got to think, you've got a tire in there and it's going to grow the faster you go. It's going to get bigger. So if it's getting bigger in there and your wheel tub is too close to your tire, it's going to scrub in there. And a lot of times guys will take their tires off after a pass and they'll look up in the wheel tub and they'll see in there there's black marks or marks or scratch marks in there where the tire is actually hitting in there. And that can cause some very serious issues down the road or during that pass. Whether it be you have a blowout and that could be very, very radical right there if that happens or it could just simply just be wearing your tire down immaturely and we don't want that. So you want as much amount of clearance in there as possible and bigger is always better in that scenario just in case if you start out with small tires and decide to go bigger down the road. So that's just how we kind of do it. But anyways, let's jump right on into this deal here and let's get to it. So anyways, like I said, we went with a 40 inch diameter wheel tub and here is my wheel tub side right here and before you even start making templates I suggest going ahead and buying your wheel tubs whether they be steel, aluminum or carbon fiber or whatever you decide to go with this same principle and same steps here are kind of work for that so what I done was I went ahead and bought this and uh, got it here in the shop and started making my templates so what I done I took this, these dimensions and we transferred it over to cardboard. So here's my cardboard template. This is my pretend wheel tub here. And this is very important. I know this looks kind of medieval and all that, but trust me guys, this will save you a ton of work down the road if you just make you some cardboard templates to make this process feel a whole lot easier and it'll make your tubs come out a whole lot nicer. So here we go. So we cut our pieces out and all you got to do is just lay your cardboard over top of your metal pieces, transfer the marks over with a sharpie, and just get to cutting. So here we go. We got our cardboard templates. We put it inside the car. Everything fit up nice and neat in there. You'll have a lot of trimming you'll have to do. And you can kind of see here, this cardboard isn't perfectly straight. I had to cut out. I had to cut out some pieces in here to get it to fit in there the way I wanted it to. And if you're wondering, well, how did you get your cardboard to radius like that? You can simply take this cardboard and rub it over top of a piece of tubing, and you can get it to start to curve there. And this will help you out a bunch to get it to fit up in there. No, it's not perfectly straight, but it'll get you started and get you in the right direction. So now, moving on to the next step there. So anyways, we've got our template. We transferred our marks over to our metal piece and we're ready to start cutting. Let's get the cutting.
pretty cool tool right there. It's just a Harbor Freight um, sheet metal shear. Uh, I found out this thing works pretty good. Uh, it actually surprised me how well it worked. Uh, this thing will just zip right through some sheet metal. And it does really good in curves and stuff like that. And uh, if you really just need to zip through it, pretty neat tool to have on uh, making those fast cuts. Yeah, you can use tin snips and stuff like that. But I thought I'd just show you that thing there, how fast that is. And uh, I'll always, when I make my first cuts, I'll leave at least an eighth inch or a quarter inch overlap while I'm getting stuff fitted in. Because when we finally get it all mounted in, and then the whole underbelly of my car is going to be really smooth and really clean looking. So I want it to hang down just a little bit. So when we finally put all those final pieces in, I can make... I can transfer my marks onto this thing and we can make everything just nice and neat and crisp and we don't have to worry about adding material to it. You never want to add, you always want to be able to take away. So that's why you leave a little bit extra on there so in the end you can take it away if you need to. Okay guys, I thought I'd show you a neat little trick here on uh, transferring a center punch here. This is something I kind of learned on my own just playing with some different things and it's kind of hard to get a center mark in a circle if you guys done much center drilling to to get a big hole started and center where you want it at. So something I kind of learned and kind of figured out you can do you can take a hole saw the size that you're wanting to use just like on, on these here you can put it where you want it at this way you know you can have it upside down like that there and run the drift punch through it like that there especially on the big holes when you don't have a big enough punch to get it centered up on that hole i know you can draw lines through it and get it all centered up using uh, the transfer templates and stuff but uh I found this way it gets it even closer for me, but I uh, just thought I'd show you guys that little trick that I've learned, and uh, let's move right along and get these holes cut on out. guys well we're about to connect the pieces together here we have got our side drilled out there and uh, it's looking nice and uh, we're ready to connect that piece to the actual top piece of the tub there now this is a job and this is an ordeal and I highly suggest having a second helper to help you do this and uh, I'm gonna try this on my own here and uh, it's going to take me a minute, it's going to be very slow, and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on this here that will make life a whole lot easier on putting these together and without bending them and uh, really making them look horrible and uh, being a mess on you here. But uh, we're going to take our time and we're going to put this together. So what I've done was we laid our template on top of this thing here. And what I wanted was not only just the size of this, I wanted an inch overhang on this side and on the other side of the wheel tub. The reason for that is I need to put holes in this thing along through here to be able to mount the rest of my panels in my car. And this is something you kind of got to be thinking about throughout the build. You want to be able to have mounting surface if you don't have mounting surface and you just put it up in there then you kind of block yourself in you put yourself in some trouble there so every build is a little bit different depending on the car depending on how you want your panels to look underneath and um, before we get into too much detail there let's get right on into it all right guys here we go we're about to connect these two pieces here and this is that part that i was telling you that is very, very hard to do. Um, I haven't found a very simple way of doing this yet. And this is something that I highly suggest having a second helper to help you with on this. And uh, I'll show you how I'm kind of doing it here to get it started and get you moving. 
and then this takes a lot of work you have to really take your time with this this is something you just can't just start beating and banging on it and raise the moral cane now that being said a rubber mallet is your friend you see these different sides here that's very very important on doing this step here that way you don't absolutely scar your material to death you can keep it nice and clean looking and you can just work your way in it now that being said this takes a lot of time here you have to be patient with it and you just have to work your way in uh, I'm going to show you how this kind of goes here and uh, I don't know how quite this is going to work out on time wise probably won't be able to do live time on this probably have to speed through some stuff but uh, I just want I just want to make it clear how slow this step really is and how long this really takes. Take your time, make it nice, make it right. So here we go, let's try it. <clears throat> These two pieces just kind of snap in together here and uh, it takes several steps of doing this. I've got my one inch lip overhang right here and uh, make sure you guys can see that there we've got our one inch right here and of course I'm going to clean all this up at the end but right now we're just trying to get this lip here bent over this edge and that kind of locks that in together and you kind of got to work your way through this to get this to work so we're going to try it and we're going to make this happen right here See, I'm not raising any mortal cane right here. I'm just barely tapping it in, and I'm slowly working it, working the edge over there. We're moving just a little bit of material at a time. You're thinking, well, man, this is taking a really long time. Yes, yes, it does. All right, so we've got a little bit of edge in there. We can work a little bit more in. So far, so good. Move it on over to the edge here. So far, so good. And I'm barely just tapping this. You can tell and you can probably hear it on the sound there. I'm not just banging the living heck out of this thing. I'm just tap, 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 tap. I'm not just banging real hard here. I'm slowly working it in. The more you do that, the better shape this thing's gonna have. You don't want these big, huge dents in here. And when you get this thing powder coated or get it wrapped or whatever you end up doing, you want it to look as smooth as possible. We don't want to use no Bondo on this. We want, we want to send this to the power coder and just make this thing look as smooth and as nice as possible. So let's keep on rolling here and see how this thing goes. So what I got was I got me just a piece of block of wood here as a backstop to put on the back side of this here. You can see it right there just to kind of help keep that shape and keep from denting it up there. So we're going to keep on moving here. right here we're right at the halfway point I mean in fact if I can show you guys how long this takes right here I mean I'm I'm really moving with it 
pretty nicely and uh, and right along here and we're just taking our time and we're just getting our first pass over this thing and you can see right here this lip I'm getting it slowly bent over and like I said this is something you can't go super fast with you just have to take your time with it and move right along with it all right guys as you can see we're getting it getting it right along there we're getting that edge bent over a little at a time we still got a lot left to do there you can see there's a lot of a lot of edges that's still sticking up there a little bit but what we're going to do is we're going to take that block and we're just going to go right along through there and clean all that up this process takes a while and uh, as soon as we get it done we can start sticking it up underneath the car all right guys here we go we're going to take that piece of wood and we're going to take our trusty hammer here and we're just going to peck it right along this edge here and get all that nice and crisp and clean and smooth right onto there that's why we're using this rubber mallet here instead of some big heavy metal hammer so let's get to it and start doing our pecking here trusty handy tool right there very high dollar very high dollar do here I'd show you on a test piece here on how I punched all the holes out in my wheel tub and in certain spots this method I'm gonna show you here works really nice and it's super fast and super clean all right so what I got here I got me a little hole punch right here and uh, this thing works really really awesome and uh, you've only got so deep that you can go here you can use this right here to adjust your depth but um, in certain spots man this this is really handy you don't have any burrs left over that you have to clean off when using this. And if you use a drill a lot with a drill bit, you'll notice you'll either bend the material or you'll put a bad burr on it in certain spots and you wanna use this as much as you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this bad boy out for you. I've already got it set up for the depth I want and the hole size I wanna punch. So here we go. I'll just show you how simple it is. You put it where you want it at. That stop right there puts it at the depth you want. So we've got it where we want it at, and we're just going to hole punch this out, just like that. So the hole's in there, I'll show you how nice and clean the hole this is. Good zoom in there for me, cutie butt. See both sides? Nice clean hole, no burr, and it's not bent. So now it's the size we want it. We're going to use our trusty Clico here to hold that in place. Stick it through there. Just like that, Clico's in place. It's held nice and tight, and we are centered up where we wanted it. In the wheel tub here, uh, we are now mounting this bad boy. Uh, what I want to do is just give you kind of a brief overview here of how I did this. Uh, we have already punched our holes into our wheel tub, and you guys seen in the previous video on how I did that with the tool I was using there. So now what we're going to do is we have our holes in here and we're gonna drill it and transfer our hole into the tubing on the chassis. So let's drill this out. All right, we've now drilled it out, and now we're gonna Clico it in. Here we go, and there it is. So now we are clico in. This thing is held in nice and tight. You can see it's not moving. It's in there real good and sturdy, and uh, those things are very, very handy tools to help hold your sheet metal into place. So whether if you're going to weld it in, if you're going to um, put rivets in it, if you're going to bolt it in, if you're going to use uh, Zeus fasteners, whatever you're going to do, these things are really nice and handy to get it nice and center and mounted solid. Well guys, that concludes part one of the wheel tub install on the Full Metal Goat. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, definitely leave me a like down below and uh, share this bad boy. That definitely helps out the channel out a ton. Uh, gets me out there to more people and uh, helps us out there. But uh, definitely stay tuned for next week. Uh, next week will be part two for the final install of the wheel tubs. I'll show how I keep both of them lined up with each other and uh, the final mounting phase of the wheel tubs so we can move on to the rest of the sheet mail work on the car, but uh, till then, 
Have a good one. Of the wheel tub install, and that will conclude keeping the wheel tubs lined up and uh, the found the.